It's Bourbon Night. Hello, I am Chad. I'm Sarah. What do we have, Sarah? We have High West Midwinter's Night Dram. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds familiar, but it sounds wrong. Okay. Well, it's from Shakespeare, but it's a twist. Ah. Instead of Midsummer Night's Dream, it's Midwinter's Night Dram. <sighs> yeah. And on the back, you get fun little uh, excerpts from the play. Nice. Which is nice if you're into literature and stuff, and if you don't, then uh, maybe it still tastes good. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this is High West Distilling, uh, Park City, Utah. It's their Rendezvous Rye, which is aged in the French oak cask, and then also the port wine barrels. Okay, so this is their it's a Rendezvous finished. Rye, and then they finish it in two different types of barrels. That's right. And this is a limited release. Correct. Yeah, they do like the act. So this one's Act Four, Scene Two, or Seven. seven. I think it's oh seven. gosh, that looks like a two. It's a seven. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> So act four, I guess they do, seven. yeah. So it's limited. So I mean, I guess there was it once in Act One, Scene One, which wouldn't it be cool to collect all those if you were really into this? And I mean, people do. And into Shakespeare, that would be pretty fun to have hanging around. See, yeah, I couldn't figure ah, out how that was gonna happen either. Go. Oh, he found it. <laughs> it's, it's hidden. So it's uh, ninety. Much, much 98 like Shakespeare's point... meat. <laughs> God. True. Yeah. Didn't we all take a Shakespeare class? Yep. Um, ninety-eight point six proof. What you gotta wonder. Is that intentional, like body temperature? Probably. You think? There are no about accidents. the heart. Didn't yeah. Shakespeare say that? I guess. I don't know. I don't know either. It's been a long time. Now I'm just making things up. He is. Well, I can't get the plastic off the top, which is kind of. Well, we'll deal with that later. But yeah. It's driving you nuts. It, but we'll it, deal it with it really later. It really is. Um, well, go ahead. Yeah. You pour me I'll some. I'll pour you. We've had High West before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had it at um, the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. We yes, had the, we did. American Prairie, which was actually really smooth. I think we had said that like, that would be yeah. a really good intro bourbon. Yeah, it was too smooth for me. It was, but first the first time bourbon drinker, it was so incredibly smooth. There were no flavors jutting out in any direction, and it would have been kind of a nice way to be like, just gearing you up for all the other yeah. things in the bourbon world. So. Absolutely, yeah. This is dark. Very dark. That is pretty. Probably from the, uh, the, the, the port. The rebarreling, yeah. Ooh. Smells kind of like baked goods. Yeah. Well, they say. Oh, but like cherry, like a cherry pie covered mm -hmm. in chocolate and cinnamon. I don't know. Yeah, they say it tastes like a proper Christmas plum. What is a Christmas plum? Christmas pl <laughs> plum pudding. Oh, never. With had lovely it. mulling spices, dried fruits, and creme. And there's other words. Creme. <laughs> Anglais. Anglais. So uncultured. Sorry. I definitely get the dried fruits and the mold spices for sure. Yeah, it's. The thing is, I just don't know about that. Like, I don't know if that's something I like. Definitely. So we're doing Christmas in July then. <laughs> Depends on when this comes out, but yeah, probably Sorry. this could come out in. Well, late June, July. <laughs> Depends on, on when it gets there, when I? it gets through the edit. Whoops. But um, this is definitely an interesting smelling whiskey. And it's got to be the influence of those those two different types of barrels. Wow. All right. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. We can. Cheers. That's spicy. Oh, the finish on that is good. You can barely taste the wine finish. Mmm. And it goes out real smooth, but it gives you, you get that wine finish on the end. That's just like, hello, I'm here. <laughs> wow. The front is like, boom. <laughs> yeah. But. This is the first taste of rye we've had today, also. We had our control bourbon, but... Correct. <clears throat> wow. I don't know what to say on the first drink. I'm going to have to go back for a I second. I might. It's, it's definitely different, and I appreciate that. Let's go back for a second. Wow. Much different the second time. There is a lot going on. There's just so much going on. The flavors. I mean, I get the cinnamon, the fruit... And then at the end, that the port, I can definitely taste the wine finish. And you know, there is another bourbon finished in port wine barrels that I can't stand. <laughs> and this is not one of them, but this is a rye, not a bourbon. So. Yeah. I think maybe that port influence is turning me off just a little really? bit. Oh, it's what's turning me on to it. Mm. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> on the internet, this is what's turning me on. <laughs> well, now you know. <clears throat> The wine finish bourbon. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot going on there. It's um, 
it, it uh, has a finish that kind of lingers that I'm not super on board with. But... I think that this is... What it says on the bottle is that this is perfect for, you know, colder months and cozying up to a fire. And I couldn't agree more. Like, this is delicious in my opinion. Not something that I would drink in the summer. Outside. Especially not outside. It's mm -hmm. very warm. Very, like, the spices. <clears throat> you know. Yeah. It's like the holidays. In a glass. <laughs> and it's too warm for summer. Just just me. Yeah. I should definitely try this again in the colder months. It is definitely different. On the third taste, I even get more, like, more flavors. This, like, middle flavor comes out. And it's sort of a little bit earthy. A little, not grassy. That's not the right word. I don't know. Every time I go back, it's like something different pops up. Yeah. You're not a fan, I don't think. Uh, I'm, and that's okay. I'm struggling with it. Don't struggle if you don't like it. No, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to come around to my decision. Like, mm. I'm, I'm a little conflicted about it right now, and I don't know where I land just yet, and I want to give it proper time before I say. You know what I think, though? I think it tastes a little higher than it is in privilege. I'd agree with I that. I think it comes off, it's 98.6, I think it comes off in the... 110 range? Yeah. I think that's how that's how it feels to me. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I would probably guess it at 105 to 110. That's what I was going to say, 105 to 110, but I can't remember the last time I saw it. I was like, this bourbon's 105. <laughs> you got the antique 107. Well, 107. I'd put that's... it on that level as far as heat. Okay. Are we ready to deliver a verdict? You can go first. Yes. All right, I say if you're into something that's unique and you're getting this around like the colder fall, winter months, I give it a thumbs up if you can find it. From what I understand, it's semi-difficult to find and it is also in the upper range as far as price. I got this as a gift, so. Um, I would recommend it if you're into unique. If you are liking like wine finished bourbons and stuff, definitely go for the wine finished rye. If you like wine finished bourbons and you like rice, then why not put them together and, and give this a shot. Um, it's interesting, a lot of flavors going on, so I would say give it a try. Maybe at a bar first and then decide if you want to buy a bottle. <clears throat> and you think. Absolutely. I would uh, I would never pass this up if it was, uh, you know, if I was given a chance to try it. It is definitely one of the more unique things that I've ever tasted. Definitely the most unique rye that I've ever tasted. Um, but as far as what I now, if I had a chance, the opportunity to buy a bottle, um, well, I probably would for trading opportunities, but for drinking opportunities, I would pass. This one's just not for me. It's got some interesting flavors that I appreciate, um, but I think it's, it's, it's either one of those types of, uh, barrels that's killing it for me or maybe the combination of them hmm. just not loving the finish the overall flavor uh yeah I, I would rather be drinking some other type of rye like pikesville or <laughs> or or something else yeah. that's just more straight up i hear you um so it's a pass for me but i can appreciate it if that makes sense a lot like shakespeare <laughs> i appreciate it I don't always want to watch it or, or experience it in the theater. Yeah. Maybe I maybe I just don't understand it. I think that's a great comparison. But I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so we will bid thee adieu. Yes. Sweet midwinter's night tram. But again, if you have the opportunity, try it because you might fall in love with it. I know some people who actually love, love this stuff. So to each their own. Right. All right. That'll do it for us. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. All right. Until next time, drink more bourbon. A little sidebar. I don't like using the word dram because when you look it up, a dram in actual measurements it's so little, so when you say, I want to have a dram of that, if it, if it were being literal, they would give you like this much. You're actually having like several. That's just me being a, a curmudgeon. Wants a good stiff pour, not a dram. Don't ever offer him a dram.
Because he's going to be like, can I have 10 drams? Can I have uh, 120 drams, please? 